and let us begin. All right, so this is technically section 1.5 from my unit one. We are talking about exponents. Um, here's just like kind of an example. In the case of repeated multiplication with the same number, we can rewrite the expression using exponents. Here is my example. Four times four times four can be written as four to the third power. Okay, an exponent is a tiny little number in the upper right of the repeated multiplication or in the upper right of the base. So we're gonna talk about the part of an exponent, which is that like, here's my exponential expression, right? X, the end, oh, that actually looks really ugly. I'm not gonna do that, sorry. The big thing that's being multiplied multiple times is called the base. And the little, the little number that it's raised to, this is just a, just a variable on, you know, that's just how algebra is. They love to throw letters in there. That little number is called the exponent. All right, and if I was to read this, how I would put this to words, it would be x to the n, nth power. x to the nth power. All right, that's how we will, that's how we would say that. Like here in my example, this is four to the third power. And I, I will ask if it's okay if I go to the next slide and, and if you're still writing down, please let me know. I do not want to rush you. So is it okay if I go to the next slide? Okay, let's look at some examples. All right, so this is expanded notations, means I wrote out what I'm multiplying and how, you know, how many times I'm multiplying. So I see here the base is 11. So to write the exponential expression, I keep the base. And then my little exponent tells me how many there are. Well, there are two 11s, so my exponent's going to be a two. And when we are dealing with numbers, we can we can even find a value of this because we all have access to a calculator of some sort. Um, if you're using the blue calculator to raise something to a power, it's that little like, it's this, it would be like 11 and then you would hit this little button and then write and then type a two, right? That's how we would type in the calculator, 11 raised to the second power or 11 squared, that's how we say that, is 121. We can only find a value if we're dealing with numbers. And you can see these are all numbers. So we should be able to find values for all of those. Okay, in this second example, I have my base is two, two times two times two times two times two times two times two. That's a lot of twos. So I write my big two and then I count out how many twos do I have? How many twos are here? And I'll take a volunteer from anyone to count how many twos. What is going to be my exponent? Seven. It is. So this is two to the seventh power. That's how we would say that. And then our calculators, we type in two, we raise it to the seventh power. So it would be like, I'll just do this this last time and then I won't do it again. Two little. I guess they call that a carrot, which I don't know why it doesn't look like a carrot. Raised to the seventh, or two raised to the seventh is 128. All right, when we're dealing with negatives, think about the parentheses as holding that negative in because this is negative five times negative five times negative five times negative five. You always want to keep using the parentheses. It's 
It only takes a second or two to draw the parentheses. So negative five. And then what's my exponent gonna be here? So we wanna count how many times by multiplying negative five to itself, like one. Oh, I see someone's checking. Oh, they don't come up right. Four, correct. That's right, there are four of them. So my exponent is a four. Now here's why this is really important that we use parentheses because Okay, I said I was only gonna do it one time, but now I, I, I'm gonna do it again. If I just type in negative five raised to the fourth power, and then my carrot looks like it's upside down, or it looks like an N, what the heck? And I don't use parentheses, my calculator doesn't know that I'm raising that negative to the fourth power. So I say negative five raised to the fourth power gives me negative 625. All right, now if I put in my calculator with parentheses, negative five raised to the fourth power, and I type that in my fancy little calculator here, negative five raised to the fourth power, that gives me a positive 625, which is, this is the correct, because I must raise that negative because it is negative five times negative five times negative five times negative five. So, be really careful, make sure you use parentheses. I'm gonna circle this one because you wanna make sure you use parentheses. So we know that negative five raised to the fourth power is 625. Okay, so make a little note of that somewhere in your notes that you wanna always use parentheses with negatives. All right, now let's look here. We got a fraction and you're like, dang it, but we don't fraction. Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. All right, so one fourth is gonna be my base. And I am gonna use parentheses with fractions too because um, if I don't, it might only affect the denominator. So this is, so my exponent, how many one fourths do I have here? What's my exponent going to be? Three. Yeah. Three. Now, in your calculators, you can just put in, open parenthesis, one divided by four, because that really is what a fraction is, right? So open parenthesis, one divided by four, all of this raised to the third power. This is going to give us a decimal. Okay, and we have to turn it back into a fraction. You could think about this like two ways too. You could think about raising one to the third power over four to the third power like this. This would not be wrong. It's just weird. Those are the same things, right? One to the third power is gonna give us a one, but four, four to the third power is 16. No, it's not. My calculator just lied to me or I typed in the wrong thing. It's 64. So this is one over 64. When I use the parentheses for one fourth raised to the fourth power, I get, I'm sorry, third power, I don't know why I said that. Uh, 0 0.015625. I'm not really looking for decimals. You wanna make sure you keep it as a fraction, but we only have two of these, so it's not gonna be that bad. But you can just cube, like raise the one to the third power and then raise the four, because I'm raising both of these numbers, top and bottom to the third power, and I get one over 64. So for number five, now I have two different bases, so we're gonna take them piece by piece, right? I'm gonna separate here, because first I'm gonna look at my, my seven. I have a base of seven, and there are two of them, so that's my exponent. And then I have a base of four, and there is three of those. So three will be my exponent there, okay? So now it's seven to the second power times four to the third power. So we use our fancy calculator, seven to the second power is 49. So this is 49 
times four to the third power, which is 64. Let me have space here. So 49 times 64. Well, <clears throat> I'm not going to make you do this by hand, you know, bust out that calculator. 64 times 49 is 3,136. And maybe right now it's like, well, it would have been just easier to type in my calculator seven times seven times four times four times four because I probably entered that many keys on my on my calculator when I put all of this in there. But you know, we're just practicing, we're building up to deal with variables. <clears throat> all right, down here in number six, I have two different bases, but they're not all next to each other. So I'm first going to start with my base of seven. I mean eight. I'm sorry. Sorry, one, two three, four, eight, right, eight to the fourth times, and then I have one, two, three, negative twos. Make sure you use parentheses. That's gonna be a three here. <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and get your calculator out and tell me what that value is. Eight to the fourth power times negative two to the third power. It's a pretty big number or a pretty small number, I should say. <clears throat> Is everyone able to put this in their calculator? I know some of you have calculators. I, I gave them to you. So eight to the fourth power times negative two to the third power. That's what I'm looking for. What is that? Is it one million? Oh, somebody's blanking. If it's not positive, my darling. It is in fact a negative, but I love your numbers. So that would only be a minor, right? When I square negative two to the third power, it's negative eight. The, the difference is here for number three, this was an even number. So remember two negatives make a positive. This is an odd number. So the two negatives make a positive, but then I have that third negative. So my answer is gonna be negative here. So it's negative. 32,768. Woohoo! Lovely, lovely. All right, oh my gosh. Well, this is the last fraction we have to deal with on this page. I don't think there's any more on the next page. Oh my gosh, I just put my paper. What the heck? All right, so let's look at this one. This should be fairly simple. We have two over three. I have two of those. So two over three, oh, I don't know why my pen does that, to the second power times nine to the second power because I have two of those as well. All right, so this is gonna be a crazy number or maybe not so crazy. Let's see how this goes. Remember, you can put in your calculator in the parenthesis, open parenthesis, two divided by three, close parenthesis, Time raised to the second power times nine raised to the second power. Anybody want to give this one a go?
So the, it is important to practice putting these into the calculator. Sorry, I'm fixing my paper I ripped. Does anyone have an answer yet? 36. It is 36, perfect. Thank you for that. Beautiful, wonderful, all right. 36. <clears throat> Be really careful because this isn't nine times two, it's nine to the second power, which is 81. Just because I'm, I just wanna make sure that we understand this is 81 here. And then my fraction, I have two to the second power is four, three to the second power is nine. So now I have four divided by nine times 81. Well, remember when we were doing this, I know, I know Becca was doing really great with this cross simplification. Well, nine goes into 81 nine times. Nine goes into itself once. So 81 becomes a nine, this is a one. Then I multiply straight across and I get 36 over one. If you wanted to do it by hand, you know, some people just love that stuff. Some people don't, but that's okay. All right, that's why it was 36. All right, moving on. Now we're gonna talk about variables. Yahoo, because this kind of is nice. And because unless I'm given a value of the variable, I cannot evaluate it, but I can write an exponential expression stating what this, what this is, okay? So first off, obviously A is my base. How many A's do I have here? We need to just count them, right? Nine. Nine? You right. A to the ninth power. And, and that just looks ugly. Let me just write that again. A to the ninth power. Okay. Because it kind of looks like A to the A power. My nines are not that nice. I cannot evaluate that. I do not know what A equals. So we are, we're going to just draw a little line through that part if you have this notes paper. Okay, and then sometimes there's, there's situations like this where I am, where XY is my base. I'm multiplying XY to itself so many times. <clears throat> so XY here is going to be my base. What is my exponent going to be? How many of them are there? Five. Five. Now here's what I want to show. I'm going to circle this one because this is a little special too. Um, I do have five of them, but here it looks like I'm only raising the y to the fifth power. So you must also use parentheses. So use parentheses. And I don't, I should have just abbreviated. That's like a really long word. And I don't even know if I spelled it right, but it looks good. It looks good to me. All right. So it's really important we use parentheses so that, so that I know, or you, you know that you are multiplying x, y to itself five times. Again, I don't know the value of x or the value of y, so I cannot evaluate it. There's no value. All right, so now when I look at number 10, I have one, two, three different bases. I'm gonna go in alphabetical order because it just feels right, okay? So first I'm gonna start with R. How many R's do I have here? I have one, two, right? So it's R to the second power. So those are my two R's. Then I have an S's is my next base. So I have one, two, three, four, five S's. So that's my exponent. And then my last base would be T. How many T's do I have? Let's see, I have one, two, three. So three is gonna be my exponent here. So now, this one looks even the most complicated so far that we've done. So R to the second, S to the fifth, T to the third, because that's how many there are. This is a lot easier to write than this expanded form. 
and we don't know a value of this, so we cannot we cannot plug in numbers there. All right, number eleven. I have two different bases. Doesn't matter who you want to start with. Um, I guess we could start with nine because we usually put the numbers in the front. So I I am I do have a value for nine, so that's really nice. So when we say nine is our base, what's my exponent for the nine? How many nines are here? Number eleven. Three. Yeah. So nine to the third, and then we have K. We count up our Ks. How many Ks do I have? Six. Yeah, perfect. K to the six. Now, because nine is something I can come up with a value, nine to the third power, I'm gonna dust off my calculator and bust it out. And I'm gonna say nine raised to the third power is 729. I cannot have a value. I mean, I do not have a value for K. So it's going to be 729 K to the sixth power. That's how we would write that. All right, so 12, a uh, little similar to 10 because now I have three different bases, right? I have negative seven, I have M, and I also have N. So we're going to put the numbers first again. I have negative seven. I, I just like to change colors. I don't know why. Negative seven raised to the second because there's two of them. And then we'll do the M's first. I have one, two, three M's. So M to the third. And then I have one, two N's, N to the second. Now here's the case if we don't use parentheses, we're gonna get an incorrect because this is an even exponent. So we should end up with a positive value for negative seven squared. When I square negative seven using parentheses in my calculator, I get positive 49. Then just write the variables the way that they are. 49 n to the third power times n to the second power. All right, two more to go, and then we'll talk about something else a little bit. All right, number 13, I have this P minus two times P minus two times P minus two. So my base huh, is P minus two. I'm gonna keep it in parentheses. And then I have, oops, sorry about that. Oh my gosh. I have three of them, so that's gonna be my exponent. Now I know I have a value here, but I don't know what P is, so I can't just raise negative two to the third power and then just have this P to the third power happening because parentheses happen first. So there is nothing, I, there's no value I can give here. So it's just gonna remain the quantity, that's what we call it when you have stuff in parentheses, the quantity P minus two raised to the third power. All right, last one on this side. All right, so let's start with the numbers here. I have six, six, six. I have three sixes, six to the third power. All of that times A plus B to the what power? What's my exponent gonna be for my A plus, my quantity A plus B? Um, two. Two, perfect. All right, so I cannot have, a, I, I cannot find a value for a plus b to the second power, but I can reduce or simplify six to the third power. So again, we bust out our fancy little calculator, six to the third power. What does that give me? Yeah, thank you. 216, and then don't forget your a plus b to the second power. I don't know what that is. Okay, so that's, that's basically the expanded notation 
exponential expressions and the values if we could find them, okay? So on the back side of your paper, for those of you that have them, if you don't, um, I did put some in and maybe you can go back and watch this again and fill it out. I don't know, whatever you wanna do. All right, so now we're gonna talk about zero exponents, okay? Any number, this is really important. Any number except zero raised to the zero power is defined as one. So, and it could be, it could be a variable too, right? So here I have one to the zero power, that's one. Two to the zero power is one. Three to the zero power, Mm -hmm. one, four to the zero power is one, and zero, I mean, I'm sorry, x to the zero power is one. And this just says that x cannot be zero. Like if I take my calculator and say zero to the zero power, I get a domain error. So that's the only number we cannot raise to the zero power. But it can be like negative one million to the zero power, it's gonna be one. Doesn't matter how big or how small, as long as it's not zero, anything raised to the zero power is one. And there's also a negative exponent rule, okay? So if, if you have a base raised to the negative exponent, to rewrite it with a positive exponent, we just, we move it to the denominator. It can be written as one over x to the positive n. So I always usually, like if you see negative exponents, they're really sad. And they're like, oh my God, I'm crying. Ooh, this is sad. Okay, and it's like, I don't like where I am. I wanna change locations. So if I move down south, down here, now I'm happy, yay. Like some people don't wanna live in Pennsylvania, they wanna go to Florida. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but that's the analogy I use to help me remember. All right, so negative exponents have to be written as fractions. And then when you write them as a fraction, the exponent is now positive. <clears throat> All right, let's look at some examples. Um, okay, so we want to first rewrite it using a positive exponent, okay? So my five is my base raised to the negative two, that is the same as one over five to the second power. Because this is a number, I can evaluate it even farther or simplify it. So one over 25 is the same as five to the negative two power. Here, in number 16, here's my sad exponent. It's not happy here, it wants to move. So we rewrite it as one over eight to the second power. <clears throat> because we know the value of eight, we can evaluate it, right? So in your calculators, um, you just want, you want to keep this one in the numerator and then just plug in eight to the second power. That's going to be your denominator. So what's my denominator going to be here? 64. Yeah, one over 64. All right, chucking right along. Number 17, nine to the negative one power. Negative exponents are terrible. We rewrite it one over nine to the one power. That feels so weird saying that. And what is nine to the one power? Or raised to the first power. It's just a weird thing. <clears throat> it's just nine. So it's just gonna be one over nine. That's a weird one. Okay, number 18, we're gonna rewrite this bad boy right here. One over four to the fourth power. And we can evaluate four to the fourth power. actually bigger than I thought it was gonna be. One over 256. All right, a couple more here on this side. And then we only have, I think eight more and we'd be finished. Hopefully we can get there. 
All right, number 19, 10 to the negative third power. When I rewrite this with a positive exponent, I get one over 10 to the positive three. I always like raising 10 to powers because like that's how many zeros I'm gonna have. Because when I put in my calculator 10 to the third power, that gives me a thousand, which has three zeros. Yeah, only, only the tens are like that. But I, I don't know, I find that pretty cool. All right, number 22 to the negative seventh power. When we rewrite that with positive exponents, we have one over two to the positive seventh power. That is the same as one over two to the seventh, 128. Okay, does anyone have any questions about that? It's pretty straightforward. You just rewrite exponents by moving them to the denominator. All right, now we're gonna ramp it up just a scooch. All right, because now I have more than one thing happening, okay? So let's look at number 21. First, we're gonna rewrite four to the negative third power with a positive exponent that is one over four to the third. And then we have seven to the negative one. We rewrite that, that's one over seven. Right? We don't need to write the one as we saw in number 17. Anything to the first power, it's just itself. All right, but we need to evaluate this even farther. So one over, so this one right here, one over four to the third is one over 64. times one over seven. I don't know, you were like, you told me there wasn't gonna be any more fractions, but we're only multiplying the denominator, 64 times seven. That's gonna be our new denominator, 448. All right, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip these four. I'm a little worried about time. And we're just gonna focus on 21, 23, 25, and 27. I'm just gonna go down this line here, okay? So first, let's look at number 23. This is a little different because three is not raised to a negative exponent, so that's gonna just stay the same. When I rewrite that, I'm not, I'm not going to change anything. It's three to the fourth power. But my handwriting is terrible. So three to the fourth power. But the nine, when I times nine to the negative second power, I need to rewrite that. That's one over nine to the positive two power like that. So now we just take it piece by piece, right? We figure out what is three to the fourth power. It gives me 81. I guess I could write it a little bigger, sorry. So 81 times, and when one over nine to the second power is one over, one over what? What's nine to the second power? What's my denominator gonna be here? 81. <clears throat> yeah. So 81 times one over 81 is really essentially 81 divided by 81. What's my answer gonna be? If we type it in our... What is it? One. One, right? Oh, man, we did all that and our answer was one. That was crazy. But make sure you take your time. It's not a big deal, okay? We just type in 81 times one divided by 81 and hit enter and you should get one. <clears throat> all right, for problems like number 25 and 27, we're, we have variable expressions. So it's simply a matter of rewriting it with a positive exponent. How would I rewrite 25 with a positive exponent? I mean, look, look what we did in number 21. When we wrote four to the negative third power with a positive exponent, we simply wrote it as one over four to the positive three power. We're doing the same thing with 25 only, now our base is an X. So what does that look like? What does 
it look like? How can I rewrite this with a positive exponent? Just take a guess, guys. Don't worry. All right, I guess you're scared. Don't be scared, okay? We just do exactly the same thing. We're gonna write one over my base and then write it with a positive exponent. So, oh, now somebody wants to do something? What you got? Don't be scared. One over X to the positive nine. That's it. I'm finito. Benito. Okay. That's how we rewrite positive exponents. We just simply make a fraction, and then as soon as we move this to the denominator, that exponent becomes positive. I know I said I wasn't gonna do 26, but I want to do 26 anyway, because now I'm nervous. How would I rewrite a to the negative fourth power with a positive exponent? It's exactly the same thing we did in 25. A to the negative fourth power, I want to write it with a positive exponent. Hello, please don't go to sleep on me. We only have three more to do. Because now I feel like we should do 28 too. <laughs> Here I thought we were doing good. What is my expression written with a positive exponent? Get some Jeopardy music. You can do it, guys. I believe in you. Hmm? Anybody out there? It's like doesn't get any easier, okay? So if you're having troubles here, we're gonna have lots of troubles moving forward. So um, someone out there has to know how to write a to the negative four power with a positive exponent. Oh, uh, one over a four. Yes, uh, thank you, Sebastian. I was dying over here. One over a to the fourth power. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you bonus points for that. I'm going to make note. Bonus. Thank you so much. Okay. So 27, 28 might be a little daunting because there's a lot of stuff happening. So we're just going to, I'm going to do these with you. Hopefully you're writing them down too. I would start by writing the original expression if you don't have this note sheet. So first, we only rewrite the ones with negative exponents. The only one here with a negative exponent is R. So that needs to go in the denominator. R to this positive sixth power once it's down here. And we talked about this in the beginning. What is anything raised to the zero power? One. Yay, one. So you know what? We don't even need to worry about that. That's just one. And one times anything is just whatever that is. This P to the 11th power is the 11th positive. So that's going to be my numerator here. P to the 11th. That's how we rewrite that, okay? Negative exponents go down below. 
and then they're positive and happy, and then positive exponents will stay on top. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. We can apply that, what we did in 27 to number 28. All right, because again, I have three things going on here. Three to the negative three, no bueno, must go down below. So when I write it down below, it's just three to the third. Then I have four to the negative, I mean, I'm sorry, M to the negative four, also no bueno. I have to write that also down in the denominator. M to the fourth power. And now I have N to the positive fifth power. Am I gonna write that in the numerator or the denominator? If it's N to the positive fifth power. Do I need to rewrite that or can it stay it's on the computer? Yeah, it's gonna be in the numerator. Okay, the only difference between these two is I have this three to the third. I can simplify that with a value. I can get out my fancy dancy little calculator and I can type in three to the third power. And 27. I get, hey, noise. You know what, Terry, now I'm gonna write that down too. I really appreciate your participation. Thank you so much. All right, so I can't simplify n to the fifth, so that's gonna stay the numerator. But we do know that three to the third is 27, because Gary Nell told us so. And then m to the fourth is just gonna remain m to the fourth like so. And that is it. That is as far as I can go with that expression. Okay, my little darling. Now, I wanna show you something. Hold on in just one second here. 